student intifada. Now, since we are in town with Kamla, but also as a reminder to all of us, I want to talk about what's happening on the ground in Gaza. Except it's really hard because there's no journalists left in Rafa. The death count had also for months been frozen at 35,000. It has only recently jumped to 40,000, but we know this is still a horrific miscount because of the people trapped under rubble. Because the people who are counting have been bombed. And because our media, our mainstream media, has a vested interest in lying to us and downplaying the severity of this genocide carried out by Israel with our taxpayer dollars. Hey Kamala, how can you live with yourself every day knowing that the majority of US residents have been screaming for a ceasefire for months? And yet you continue to send our tax dollars, dollars that we need at home to fund a genocide. We need that money. We need it for healthcare, for education. But it's more important to you to bomb children. And why? What is your justification? So why are they funding this genocide? They say they're doing this for Jewish safety. They passed a bill in the House saying that it is anti-Semitic to criticize Israel. They say, shame, yeah. So, Kamala Biden, they are supporting this genocide for the idea of Jewish safety, but we know that is a fucking lie. That is a fucking lie. How dare you? How dare you use the idea of our safety to slaughter youth like me? How dare you? As of October 7th, 40% of the population of Gaza was 18 or under. That's because we know the nerve. We see through what this is because it's not about safety. It's not about safety for me. It's not about safety for anyone. It's a resource grab. It is for oil. It is for gas. It is to make them richer. It has nothing to do with your safety. You know, a previous speaker mentioned this. If they cared about a sea star, if they cared about lives, if they cared about humanity, they could have ended this with a phone call. Any time in the last eight months, they could have stopped funding it. They could have not sent another $14 billion in aid. But what did they do? There are anti-Zionist Jews before me. There will be more after me, generation to generation, the door by door. that makes us safe. It is not Zionism that makes us safe. It is not U.S. imperialism that makes us safe. It is solidarity with other oppressed peoples that makes us safe. It is fighting against state violence that makes us safe. It is fighting against state repression that makes us safe where we are. And we will continue to fight to build a better world for all of our children.